What up, BTB folks? Just got back from a little break here, a couple of weeks without making a vid, so I'm off to a gig. I think this is just the perfect time to uh, say what's up to you guys. And we need to talk about something really important. What do we do when we get overwhelmed by practicing the trumpet, by learning to play the trumpet with our gigs and all that stuff? And this is a great topic this, these days because I am overwhelmed like a motherfucker. And the, the uh, special little brand of anxiety that I'm feeling these days has to do with balancing the practice and the gigs and feeling like you got to get everything done. Um, so there's a couple things that go into this. First of all, when you're doing all that, your chops just get beat to hell. Uh, but it can be hard to take a break from your routine. Say you have like a practice routine or something that you like to maintain. And, you know, there can be some anxiety and some guilt associated with kind of putting that on the back burner and that's sort of where I'm at right now. And the funny thing is, is that we get anxious about it. Why? Because we want to keep uh, improving. But sometimes, you know, a little r and &R might be the best way to go. So you guys, if you've been following along, you know that I preach the proponents of the daily. And the daily is basically just something that you choose that you're going to do every day. And really it just acts as a, uh, a way of getting in the habit of practicing every day. So it's, it's usually really easy, something that it's kind of a no-brainer and you can just do it and then you, you've you got that, you're staying in the habit of practicing and then you've also got that um, psychological small win thing happening. So where you keep, you feel like you keep working toward your goals. And uh, I decided to start my daily, I think I started it on December 1st and at the time it just consisted of ear training. And as the little parts of it became more comfortable, as they became easier for me to do, I would just add in a little bit here and there. So this ear training course that I'm working on, once I passed the lesson, I would take that as an opportunity to sort of amend the daily, add something or take something away. And what's ended up happening is that I've added in a number of things and it comes out to be about, I'd say it takes me about 45 minutes now, right? So it's, it's a pretty um, sizable routine. It's not like sitting around playing the Bill Adam routine for two hours but it's not 10 minutes either. And recently I've been feeling a lot of anxiety about getting everything in. And the problem with doing that is that when you're feeling anxious about it and you're just doing something just to get it in, you know, I, I don't feel like you're learning quite as much from that. You're not able to really relax into it and to um, get a lot out of the experience. You're just kind of going down the checklist and it doesn't seem like you learn quite as much that way. Or you're just applying the sort of negative feelings to doing your practice routine. And that's not cool. That is not the skill of chill. And I need to be practicing the skill of chill these days because I haven't been doing it. Um, so anyway, so what do you do when you get overwhelmed by this? Well, you really got to whittle it down to what's actually important. And it's funny because the thing that can give you all the anxiety, the thing that can really hold you back is your desire to become a better player. And this was, this is something that, uh, you know, Kenny Werner's book, Effortless Mastery, this is what he's talking about, where he, he suggests a practice routine that looks like one uh, aspect of the routine is for like playing lines. This is from a jazz perspective. One aspect of the routine is for internalizing rhythms. And then the other aspect of the routine is for opening up your ear to harmony. And what you do is you take a slot of the day for each of those three things. And then you just pick one exercise and you just work on that exercise until you've basically mastered it. And then you move on to the next exercise. So, the, the thing is, that I'm running into trouble with, with the anxiety, is because that is a really difficult thing to do. When I start noticing that my weakest, the weakest aspect of my playing is in my fingers, then I want to sit around and uh, play scales all day. I want to sit around and do the chromatic scales, and then I decided to add in this cool little triad thing that my friend taught me. And then I'm adding in this little uh, lick, or this melodic fragment from the head to joy spring. And I'm doing all this different stuff, and then I start to feel emotionally tied to doing it all. If I don't get it all in, then I then I get bugged. Um, but really, when you when you get right down to it, 
most of us, I feel like, spend the majority of our lives just kind of doing that, just skimming the surface on a bunch of different things. And we never actually get around to really drilling down one take one technique or one exercise or, or, or one piece of vocabulary or whatever it is until we really have it mastered and we can just do it every time without thinking about it. Um, there's very few things that I can say that I've learned to that level and most of uh, the progress I've, I've made has just been sort of this general thing. But then there's always that nagging voice in the back of your head that knows that you're not reaching the level that you want because you're not perfecting one small thing to the point that you really want it to be at. Um, so, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at my daily here and there actually is one aspect of it that I'm following Kenny Werner's uh, suggestion on and that is the ear training. And I don't necessarily set a timer or anything but I just do a comfortable amount of ear training. And like I said, I have different assignments that I have to pass off. And once, <clears throat> and then I just do that amount each day. And it, I do it for about 10 or 15 minutes. I either pass or I don't pass. And then I just keep doing the same thing until I pass and then I add in the, uh, or then I replace that exercise with the next one. And that's effortless mastery. Imagine if you did that with like the Arpen book and you just said, I'm just gonna do this one thing and I'm just gonna do it every day until I'm totally killing it, until I sound like Rafael Mendez playing through these articulation things and then once you've gotten it to that point then you move on to the next one and then you perfect that one but obviously you're gonna be a much better player if you get the very first thing to the point of mastery it's gonna be so much easier for you to do all sorts of different things down the line and you're going to be able to get the chops that you want get the technical facility that you want but it can be really challenging to just focus in on one thing and wait really that's what it is it's kind of seems like a waiting game wait until it's just all in there and you're doing it without thinking about it. You don't have to process the information and then you move on to the next thing. So I'm looking at my routine and I, and I notice that there's a couple of things. I got chromatic scales, scales in there. Like I said, I got the uh, the triad thing and I got the joy spring thing going on. And But really those are all working on the exact same thing. Just fingers. It's just facility. It's uh, hearing the notes, being able to play the notes fast. So I don't need to do all three of those things. I can just choose to do one of them until I can do it really well, and then I just move on to the next thing. So, of course, easier said than done, and uh, making this video is a little bit therapeutic, uh, just to kind of get it out there and say it out loud. You know, it seems a lot more uh, manageable. But anyway, so, you know, just some food for thought on when you get overwhelmed by these things. It's really just scale it back to what do I need to be doing? What do I, what's gonna give me the greatest leverage? Let me just do this one thing, um, or maybe like two or three things that are working on different aspects of your playing. And just, you know, just stay with it. Just, uh, just ride it out until you're killing it. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, that's it. I'm out in Agora Hills right now. Nice part of town. Playing a gig out here tonight with Bernie's big band again. Uh, played with the fat band two nights ago for the first time which was pretty cool. Uh, I was playing the third trumpet book and still feeling the burn, if you know what I mean. Anyways, a swing by Blackwell's Trumpet Basics, sign up for something, get on the mailing list. Uh, I got a new video course coming out here soon. It's aimed at comeback players. It deals a lot with the psychology of how to practice, finding the time to practice, all that stuff, getting in the right habits, as well as deals with some basic mechanics and stuff like that. So if you got any questions about basic trumpet playing mechanics or just how to approach getting better at the trumpet, uh, I think you'll dig it even if you're not necessarily a comeback player. But anyways, um, if you got this far, please give the video a thumbs up. You dig and subscribe. I want to show you something real quick. So you guys know how I do the pencil exercise with a crayon? Whoa, okay. Anyways, I left a crayon in my car the other day, came back after my church gig, and it had melted into the seat. Deep. So let that be a lesson to you guys. Don't leave crayons sitting on your car seats when it's blazing hot outside. Talk to you next time.